Welcome once again to the City of Maple Grove Report. I'm Dave Kaiser from CCX Media. Thanks for joining us along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. The notes are ready to tell you what happened at the most recent council meeting and also a lot of news from around the city. Maple Grove Day is coming up, so a lot of information as we preview that. So on the 26th, the work session before the council meeting and the topic was economic development manager candidates. We've talked about this. How's the process moving along? Yeah, so council did interview three finalists um, earlier in June and so we're just kind of working through the final process here to select a candidate and so hopefully on our July 17th meeting we'll have a candidate for hire there and wrap up that that process and get a new economic development manager on board and you heard correctly July 17th for the next meeting because of the holiday we'll mention that more as we go along so the regular meeting on the 26th about an hour 20 minutes long nothing from consent we jump right to the open forum and new business and representative Robbins was in to mm -hmm. give a little recap of the session yeah so we um, worked a lot with uh, representative Robbins this session on a variety of bills and so she came to provide an update on that she's always been a really a great advocate when it comes to law enforcement issues of domestic violence those types of things as well as on um, various tax provisions so grateful for her service her support on we did receive some state bonding dollars on our community center project um, for the design component of the project and appreciate her support on that and look forward to working with her next session on a, a subsequent request on the construction dollars but always good to have the legislators in for an update uh, post session. All right, there was a big crowd at that meeting to hear Representative Robbins, but also for this next item to hear about some firefighters. Yeah. Tell us about the oath of office. Yeah, so we had three members of our fire department team in um, to be sworn in. And so we had um, firefighter Eric Williams uh, that was sworn into service. He was kind of part of the last class, but um, was catching up on a few things to get sworn in now um, with this group. And then fire inspector specialist Jesse Navin, who just recently joined the staff. And and then Assistant Fire Chief Brandon Schooneman. So very um, grateful to have them joining the full-time side of the team, the two, mm -hmm. um, Jesse and Brandon, and then um, Eric serving in a paid on call capacity. Um, so always nice to have them in and their families and um, honor their, their service and getting sworn in. Number of photos taken, so that will be remembered. Next item was Minnesota Women of Today Heart Award presentation to the police department. Give us a little background here. Yeah, so the Minnesota Women of Today certainly has a local chapter here in Maple Grove, but they had State Pre President Janice um, Teske and District Director Carla Hansen um, were there to present, along with Bonnie Martin, who's or Bonita Martin, who's um, a local representative from the Women of Today, okay. um, presenting the police department with the. Um, the Minnesota Women of Today President's Heart Award for its work to raise awareness and address domestic violence in the community. So it really focused on the police department's domestic violence response team, the Purple Patch Initiative, our cornerstone in-house domestic violence advocate that we have um, on staff at the police department. So really recognizing mm -hmm. kind of the full scope of work that the police department does, also partnering with Maria's Voice um, yeah. and uh, that public out, outreach education effort that they continue with. So great to have that recognition for the police department and all the important work they do on that issue for the community. Congratulations to the police department. One public hearing held on the 26th and that is a business that people are looking forward to because it has something to do with pickleball. Tell right. us about pints and paddles, where they're going to be located and what process they're in. Yeah, so this is up in the Grove area, kind of just a little bit west of Target. So if you've been up in that area, you'll see right next to Crunch Fitness um, this construction underway, but mm -hmm. Pints and Paddle will be an indoor pickleball facility that's paired with kind of a, a beer hall and, and a restaurant type component with that. Um, this was their liquor license, so full um, on sale intoxicating Sunday liquor, and they are looking to open around the Labor Day holiday time frame. So one of the owners was there to mm -hmm. present and talk about the new business coming to town, but I think you're right. Everybody's yes. looking forward to this new opportunity for not only recreation, but um, the food and and beverage mm -hmm. service as well. All right, we'll keep you up to date on that progress to community and economic development items and a number here, longer portion of the meeting. The first was Arbor Lakes Business Park 
that work continues to go on, what's the next phase of that process? Yeah, so this building eight is just kind of due east of Lowe's there, kind of at that corner right on 694. Um, a lot of work here around um, kind of the elevation of the site. We're working on bringing that berm down as you get kind of east of Lowe's to provide some additional view shed into the site there. These buildings would sort of face um, 94 and kind of be the face of the business park there. So in front of Planning Commission, um, this one kind of went twice um, in front of Planning Commission to do some additional work on the architecture and the landscape and then how kind of that view shed would work coming in from 694. So this one did come back to council, lots of questions to kind of affirm what they're doing on the architecture landscape and then kind of how that site would be leveled out there. If you drive along 694, you can kind of get a sense mm -hmm. of there's a little bit of a, a berm and then dipping into the site. So lots of groundwork or uh, mm -hmm. earthwork to be done out mm -hmm. there in the coming weeks and months. Um, but this one did get approval um, for the land use approval for this one. Another item under community and economic development was River Valley Church coming to the northern end of town. Yeah, so River Valley Church is actually a church that's been meeting here in Maple Grove for a little over a year. They've been meeting at the Whirly Ball site. Um, and so they uh, are looking to go at a site kind of in the northwest quadrant of the city off of the new Arbor Ridge Parkway. So west of 94 and kind of just north of what will be the new 610 corridor that will okay. extend across the fields out there to County Road 30. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of, you know, maybe neighborhood interest in this one out in that northwest quadrant there was some media coverage uh, the star tribune kind of talked about a mega church you know coming to that area um, this is river valley is a bigger church um, uh, entity they have a several locations around the metro area a little bit larger campuses in the south metro this um, campus that would be developed here is the auditorium size within it is about a 600 seat auditorium mm -hmm. so a little smaller than some of the other bigger churches that they have um, that are River Valley in the South Metro so um, generally a pretty good location for this we have a lot of transportation investment happening out in that Northwest mm -hmm. corridor whether it be for the Evanswood development that's occurring there's another development out there called Bella Woods that's that's been approved um, and then of course with 610 coming across um, there really will be some transportation improvements that'll provide easier access in and out of this site. Mm -hmm. So this one, um, after some discussion just about parking, traffic circulation, those types of things um, did gain approval out there. City Council then reconvened or actually adjourned to go to the EDA meeting to talk about a big project, Project Black Bear. Mm -hmm. So again, give us a little background and the need to go to EDA for this step of the process. Yeah, so this is um, again back out in kind of that gravel mining area just further east of the Arbor Lakes Business mm -hmm. Park Building 8 uh, project that we were just speaking about. Right. Um, this is the land that's currently owned by Macrossan and is being developed by Ryan Companies, so kind of a partnership there between Ryan companies in Macrossan. So the piece of land that would be right up along 694 there, kind of that showcase piece, um, 40 acres that they're looking to, to develop. Um, the project that they're pursuing at this time is for a 400,000 square foot facility containing office space, research and development labs, as well as customer facing training facilities. And the, pro the project is going by the name Black Bear at this time mm -hmm. um, because of corporate um, wanting um, some interest there. So um, very very important project for the Northwest Metro here. Um, the city is at the table with tax increment financing, which is available to them because this is a soils district, a lot of soil correction that needs to happen to kind of bring that site back to development. We're going to be, the site would be raised a bit. So talking about that view shed in right. from 694, wanting that to be kind of the front door of those buildings. Um, and uh, then just infrastructure cost of extending, you know, sewer, water, and road to those areas to serve the site. Um, so that southern site would be was 40 acres, and then there would be another 60 acres to the north of that. That again is owned by Macrossan. Mm -hmm. That would be available for development, kind of that office and industry type users as mm -hmm. well. So increment being provided to this project by the city. Um, we also um, came back. So that was an EDA action to approve um, that TIF business subsidy agreement, and then. Um, back to the City Council to approve that agreement but also um, make uh, we have to sign on to these applications to the state for the Minnesota Investment Fund and the Job Creation Fund. Right. State is at the table, Department of Economic Department of Employment and Economic Development is at the state 
or at the table with these projects um, pretty significantly. So for the Minnesota Investment Fund, the state is bringing $4.25 million to the table and for the Job Creation Fund, um, $1.75 million to the table. So great to see the state here um, to complement that. Our, our TIF contribution to this project um, is right about $6.7 million, so kind of matching what the state is bringing here. So we're still competing for this project mm -hmm. with um, other sites uh, around the country and so we're hopeful here in July to learn more about the decision making process with the company, the end user here, but now we kind of have um, everything in place uh, in terms of the land use entitlement approvals have been um, brought through the council and now um, sort of this public subsidy pot package not only from the city but also from the state of Minnesota so mm -hmm. more to come on this one hopefully right. as we hear about the decision the company makes very good we'll keep you up to date now to reports from different departments after the meeting first from community economic development and you're going to hear some changes and dates coming up because of the holidays so mm -hmm. planning commission changes as well yeah so no planning commission items to be heard on Ju July 10th um, so they would come back I, I believe the last Monday in July is July 30 first okay. and so they would come back on that day um, but no planning commission on July 10th and then a few new businesses to mention that people might want to get out and see what are some of the new businesses in town yeah so dancing Ganesha is open over at the fountains this is an Indian restaurant they have other locations around the metro area so they're in the old hung Thai space they're kind of out in front of Costco mm -hmm. um, so a new restaurant to check out there and then elm aromatherapy um, they just recently opened their doors in Grove Square um, so this business um, includes a variety of massage, facial services, those types of things. It's located just um, kind of next to Walgreens there right off of Elm Creek Boulevard okay. if you're familiar with the Grove area. Very good. Grove Square. Now to Engineering Public Works, a few items to pass along here. ADA transition plan, something that was touched on in consent earlier. Give us a little background here and this is going to be coming back at a later date as well. Yeah, so um, we do, uh, part of our consent agenda was the adoption of the ADA transition plan for public buildings, transit facilities, and right away. And so a lot of times to receive federal or state funding, um, these types of programs and plans have to be in place, as well as it's great to have this type of ADA program available in the community for accessibility mm -hmm. purposes. So um, this kind of put the plan in place. We're going to be coming back um, probably in August to have a broader discussion with the council just about how that implementation rolls out, some of the costs associated with that. So you'll likely hear more about that ADA plan um, in the coming months. All right, out to the roads we go. Just a couple updates to pass along. Weaver Lake Road completed. County Road 101 still in progress. Yeah, so we're still working on that County Road 101 project and there's some pretty significant detours in place. Yeah. Um, and we know we've been working with neighborhoods to try to you know, help mitigate some of the impacts of that. Um, some temporary all-way stops have been put in place to help con you know, with traffic volume, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And, and we've heard a lot from the neighborhoods. <laughs> right. We really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please don't take that away. So mm -hmm. um, I think kind of helps to provide sort of a throttle on some of those major thoroughfares and help with pedestrian crossings, those types of things. So we're going to be taking a look at all of that and bring back okay. some options to the council about how we might help with that pedestrian traffic and if there's some controls that need to stay in place there. And so more to come on that, okay. likely later in July, August time frame. All right. Your update from the meeting, a couple things to pass along today as we're recording this on the Tuesday. You're headed out to Gleason Fields tonight. Yeah, so we have our ribbon cutting for the Gleason Fields project. This is an existing park out on the west side, kind of on 101 south of Bass Lake Road there. Um, repurposed into a baseball softball facility and then a number of, you know, more neighborhood amenities added to that project as well. It's now complete and they're playing ball out there. And so we're going to be celebrating um, that uh, ribbon cutting this afternoon out there at 530. All right, next council meeting as well as the Planning Commission, that is going to be canceled. Yeah, so no meeting on the evening of July 3rd. That'll be canceled. We'll shift to our next meeting on July 17th. Okay. And then, of course, city offices will be closed on July 4th in honor of the Independence Day holiday. All right, and before that next meeting, we'll have Maple Grove Day, so the council will be fresh off all the fun in town. Again, tell us a little bit about the dates we need to remember, and we'll talk more in detail about this a little later. Yeah, so, of course, the parade is on um, 
on the Thursday evening, July 13th. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that I think the parade gets underway about 6.30. 6.30, 6.45 time frame, time frame along 89th. Yeah, along 89th mm -hmm. Avenue up there. So that'll be a lovely evening. And then we have coronation, of course, for Maple Grove Ambassadors on Friday night, July 14th. All of the, the activities on the 15th um, during the day. And we'll catch up on more detail yeah. a little bit later. Lots of fun for everyone. A website to go to to find out all the details as well. So that's it for the meeting on the 26th. Now to some other things happening around the city. We encourage people to get out and take some photos because the photo contest deadline is coming up quickly. Yeah, end of June. So June 30th um, is the deadline for all of those photo submissions and then um, they'll go through a judging process mm -hmm. and um, we'll be awarding those winners um, come late summer, early fall. All right, some additional business news to pass along away from the council meeting. First is Great River Energy, great community partner and they were having some outdoor fun. Yeah, so a um, number of members of the council as well as Mayor Stephenson were able to be out with Great River Energy to celebrate pollen pollinator month. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, have about 300 acres of pollinator habitat at Current and other sites as well as the site here in Maple Grove mm -hmm. that they are looking to restore and enhance as pollinator habitat. Um, and so that's um, something that's just a great attribute of Great River Energy. They're a great community partner on these types of things. You, As you drive by their site, you mm -hmm. can see a lot of their sustainability measures. And of course, the mayor passed the, you know, the mayor's monarch pledge. And so we're doing a lot of things around that pollinator plantings, those types of things as well. So great to be out celebrating that with Great River Energy. One other business note to pass along, a new business in the Arbor Lakes Medical Building. What is popping up there? Yeah, so we have a new um, Office of Reproductive Medicine and Infertility Associates. Um, they do have other locations in uh, Woodbury and Edina, so this is a new location for them in Maple Grove in the Arbor Lakes Medical Building. All right, a few firefighter items to pass along. First is recruitment. There's a special date coming up for people to find out more. Yeah, so we have an informational meeting on Monday, July 10th at 7 p.m. That's at Fire Station. Two, which is just north of Weaver Lake um, Road on Elm Creek Boulevard mm -hmm. there, on Maple Knoll Way. And so encourage folks to come out to that informational meeting again Monday, July 10th at 7 p.m. If they're interested, encourage them to bring their family. Um, being a paid on call firefighter is really kind of a family commitment. Um, and so it's a good opportunity to ask questions about how that might work for you and, and how that might impact your life. And so we are um, accepting applications through July 16th. MGFire.info info has a lot more information about that and again just a great opportunity to give back to your community um, they've been doing a lot of really great social media sort of highlighting some of our firefighters and it's always fun to read just sort of the variety of backgrounds that people come from um, when they serve as a firefighter mm -hmm. and and why they serve and and kind of how they make it work with their family and their other employment so really encourage people to think about that one more opportunity for that meeting and yeah. then those applications do on July 16th for kind of our next year's um, new firefighters. All right, and speaking of last year's firefighters, they're going through the process. So where are the new recruits right now? Yes, yeah, so we had seven Maple Grove apprentice firefighters recently graduate from the West Suburban Fire Academy. That's kind of the first step okay. is they go through that program down there um, at the fire academy. And so they will next move to their next phase of training and they'll become probationary firefighters on July 1st. They were um, on our council agenda approved um, earlier that evening right. on July 17th as well. I'm sorry, June 26th as mm -hmm. well. And so um, we'll see them coming back in almost a year to That's get right. um, sworn in. Um, but it's a it's a good amount of training on the front end, but yeah. this is a, a big step for them. All right, let's talk a little bit about water in the city. Restrictions coming up first, but or secondly, but first we're going to talk a little bit about life jackets. Yeah. I did not know this was available. Where can we get them? Yeah, so this is a loaner program that we have available. Um, it is um, at Weaver Lake, yeah. both at the boat launch and one near the fishing pier. And so if you're boating, kayaking, canoeing, anything that you're doing out there swimming, um, there are loaner life jackets available at those two locations on Weaver. Great idea. All right, now to the restrictions because of the hot, dry weather. And the yeah. city has looked at this in past years, but it continues continues to be a need in the city. Yeah, so we're asking residents and business owners to really observe kind of the water um, watering restrictions and that's no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day and then really following that odd even schedule by your address number um, to make sure you're just kind of watering every other day. Okay. Just kind of good stewardship um, of our water system. We really do see kind of a reduction in that water usage when we have the watering restrictions in place. So ask for folks cooperation and helping us manage um, our water resources here in Maple Grove. 
Let's now move to some special things happening around the city. The first is the farmer's market. They are going hot and heavy now with the season, and it sounds like produce is about ready to come out. Oh, yeah, it'll start rolling in here um, for all the seasonal favorites. Yeah. We probably moved through strawberries, maybe. Maybe they're still trailing along, okay. but pretty soon we'll probably be in sweet corn season and tomato season, those types of things. Sounds so good. every Thursday from 3 to 7 in the community center parking lot. Let's hop over to the town green. That's the place for some great entertainment. What's yep. coming up? Yeah, and I saw lots of folks heading over there last evening. I think last evening was the first Monday night of the okay. entertainment series. Cool. So music performances at 7 p.m. on Monday and Wednesday evenings. And then, of course, we have the, the kids' entertainment Thursdays at 1030 in the morning. And then we'll start the Friday night movies um, on July 14th. Earlier we touched on Maple Grove days. Let's give you a little more info right now. The 12th through the 16th in Maple Grove and there's a great group behind this. As yeah, well. so MGCO puts this Maple Grove Community yeah. Organization puts this event on. A lot of hardworking volunteers who here who make many days of fun happen in Maple Grove. Mm -hmm. So events really one run July 12th through the 16th. Um, you should have received or will receive shortly the kind of the event flyer yeah. um, in the mail and mm -hmm. um, they also have a website maplegrovedays.org and that has all of the, the detailed information. But again, parade thurs on Thursday evening along 89th Avenue from Zachary Lane to Elm Creek Boulevard, 6.30 start time. We have Ambassador Coronation on Friday night. And then all the day's events on Saturday that's capped off with fireworks yeah. on Saturday night um, over the town Green Lake there. So um, looks to be a fun few days again in Maple Grove. Yeah, great time to be out and about. Other things happening right around those days as well. The Arbor Lakes Art Fair, when does that happen? Yeah, so that is that same weekend. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday and Sunday, July 15th and 16th. And this happens over at the shops at Arbor Lake. So kind okay. of that center street area that mm -hmm. they redid that they close off then for events. It's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. I'm sorry, 11 to 4 on Sunday. And again, this is at um, the shops at Arbor Lakes. And this event is coordinated by the Maple Grove Arts Center. Another annual event that happens around Maple Grove Days is the History Museum Open House. So again, where is that and what do we find inside? Yeah, so the, the History Museum in Maple Grove is located as part of our Public Works facility, kind of on that southern end of that building. You'll see a sign and you can kind of park in that, that parking lot that's kind of on the south side of that facility mm -hmm. there. Um, so on Sunday, July 16th, um, their open house will be from 1 to 4 that afternoon. They'll have a special toy display and many other exhibits um, that will take you back in time of Maple Grove's history. So 9030 Forest View Lane is the address for that facility. Yeah. Hope you can stop by. All right, one last note to get you looking ahead to August already, and that is National Night Out. Tell yeah. us about the big event and why Maple Grove put so much time into it. Yeah, so always the first Tuesday in August, and this year it falls right on that day, Tuesday, August 1st. Mm -hmm. And so, um, We'll kick off the day with the community picnic over at the community center. That'll be from 11 to 1. We have a number of um, emergency equipment displays with police, fire, emergency vehicles, um, and fun activities for the kids that day. Free lunch available that Very day, nice. so we encourage families to come on out for that. And then in the evening, of course, we'll be out visiting all the block parties. And Maple Grove, you know, usually has near 200 parties throughout the community. Yeah. So police, fire, public works, all of our public officials staff, um, other um, organizations from the community go out and visit all of our neighborhoods and it's a it's a really fun evening in Maple Grove so we're already looking forward to that in August. Yeah, big, big event. We're going to give you the website here in just a second so if you want to sign up your group for that party you can do that. Heidi, thanks again for the information. Always great to chat with you. You're welcome. Let's leave you with that next council meeting date and again a reminder it's going to be in the middle of July and July 17th, 7:30 at the Government Center. You see the website at the bottom left, Maple Grove mn.gov again information about national night out maple grove days other information that's coming up in the city for heidi nelson i'm dave kaiser thanks for joining us on the city of maple grove report